Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting video on loss functions. In our previous video, we have seen mean absolute error and its variants. In this video, we will discuss about the most commonly used loss functions, which are MSC and RMSC, mean squared error and root mean squared error. So without further delay, let's jump into the video. MSC is the most commonly used loss function for regression. It's very simple. From the name itself, we can write its definition. You take the error between the predictions and your targets and then square them, then take the mean of them to get a single value. So it's just mean of squared errors. It looks like this. This is the formula for it. So these are my predictions and these are my target values. I take the difference and take the square of them and all these squared differences, I will add up and take the average value. Let us assume I have the targets like this and these are the predictions of the model. Now for calculating the MSC loss, let's go step by step. First you take the difference of these two. The order of this difference doesn't matter because you have the square term here. So negative positive values will not matter here. And then you take the square of them. Then finally take the mean of them to get a single loss value. That's it. This is the MSC loss. There is another name for this, which is called L2 loss. Some people call it L2 loss, but most of them call it as mean squared loss. L2, L1 terms are more used in regularization methods compared to loss functions. There it is being considered as wherever there is a squared term that is considered as L2 and wherever there is no squared term that is considered as L1. So we have actually L1 regularization and L2 regularization. So these are used to actually add penalty to the weights during training. So this is another name, but the most common name is mean squared error. Now let's look at the Python implementation. The code is very simple. You can implement it in just a couple of lines using NumPy. You take the difference, square it, then you take the sum of them and divide with the number, you will get the mean value. So that's it. And this is how the error surface looks like. So in this, the x-axis is actually the error which is the difference between the target and predicted values and y-axis is the MSC loss. So if you observe, because of this square term, it is not a linear relationship, it is a non-linear relationship. For smaller errors, the MSC value is less and for large errors, the MSC value increases exponentially. So using the square term, we are kind of adding weightage to the errors. Now what happens in case of outliers, obviously the loss will be very high, right? because outliers are actually the values which are far from your normal distribution. So obviously the error values for those outliers will be very high and the MSC value is much higher because of the square term. These are the features of MSC loss. As we are doing the square term here, we don't have these positive negative value cancellations. Everything we get in terms of positive values between zero and infinity. And we are kind of adding weightage to the errors because of the squaring effect. The loss function we have seen, it is a smooth curve. So it is easy to optimize compared to a curve with sharp edges like MAE. So it is preferred loss function compared to mean absolute error. But the only problem is in case of outliers, the loss will be very high. This is actually beneficial also because of two reasons. One, in most of the cases, outliers we will remove during the data pre-processing. So this won't be an issue. And because we have this weightage term to the errors, if there is any chance the network is predicting wrongly, we are actually adding more penalty to that error so that the network tries to learn better in those cases. So MSC loss performs better where you have chances of getting outlier values. Now let's look at root mean squared error, which is RMSC. It is just an extension of MSC. You just take the square root of MSC, you get RMSC. That's it. This is the MSC definition. You just take the square root of it, you will get RMSC. But why do I need to take the square root here? Why is it required? MSC is performing good, right? Why do we need RMSC? So if you see the MSC loss function, because of this square term, the total value we are getting is not the exact representation or the interpretation of your actual error. So if the difference between this predicted and target is some value x, you cannot directly represent the output of MSC as x, right? Because it should be x square. So because of this, we are getting some value as the MSC output. By using that value, we cannot get an accurate estimate of what is the actual error, the average error, right? So because of these interpretation purposes, it's better to bring down this from the square root dimension to normal dimension. That's why we use this square root here. By using square root, we are kind of bringing this MSC loss to the normal dimension where you have a better interpretation of your error. So you still have the square root term. So you will have the weightage value on your errors. Obviously, for large values, your square, square root term will be higher. Even though you are taking square root after that, this loss value will be higher for outliers compared to mean absolute errors. 
which is just the absolute difference. So this is preferred compared to MAE in case of noisy data. We can implement this easily in Python. I'm not going through it again because we have already seen the implementation of MSC. Just add the NumPy square root on top of it, you will get RMSC. In the next video, we will see some important features of both RMSC and mean absolute error. We will compare these two loss functions and find out which is preferred for different use cases. That's all from this video. Thanks for watching.